the, it, if you look at history and you look at the, the research that exists, there's not a lot of evidence to show that people had sleep challenges significantly in the past. Yes, there are accounts of people, you know, having disrupted sleep, but it's nothing like we have today. We have absolutely a current epidemic of sleep deprivation on the planet, um, not only in the United States, but kind of across the board. And um, my theory on why this is the case is because we have so many d disease promoting um, lifestyle habits. Uh, we have, as I mentioned before, so much stress in our lives. We are expected to um, work full time jobs, to care for um, care for our families, um, to somehow sneak in like fun on the weekends, <laughs> and it's 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 a lot. Um, and we also don't have um, the same support from our communities. Um, in, in generations past, we lived in a tribal society where there was kind of individualized um, roles for different people to do different things. And um, there was uh, multiple generations. So if the uh, adults needed to work, the, um, the grandparents would take care of the, the child raising um, and even differentiated, differentiated and clear roles for men and women. And all of those things have gotten very um, cloudy and murky. And, uh, and it creates so much additional stress in our lives. Um, we are dealing with so many toxins uh, in our food supply and in the air. Um, and this is also a huge contributor to why our sleep is... Um, is uh, struggling. And then we also, and I think that this is one of the main ones, it's one of my favorite ones to talk about. We have um, so many sources of unnatural light. So uh, if you think about it, the when we evolved over uh, millennia, and during that time period, we did not have access to unnatural sources of light. We had light from the sun, light from the moon, and torches, fires, maybe candles. And uh, the advent of uh, the light bulb is, if you look at, you know, the course of human history, it's only happened very, very recently, basically in the blip, blip, blip of an eye <laughs> in comparison to all of our evolution. And so as we evolved, as I talked about with the suprachiasmatic nucleus and the way that our bodies are cued for the circadian rhythm, if we are getting uh, unnatural light at nine or 10 or one in nine, nine or 10 o'clock at night or one in the morning, that light is telling our bodies that it's time to be awake. And specifically the light that we're getting from our, um, from our computer screens and our phones and our devices is very, very high in the frequency of the spectrum of blue light. So sunlight has um, a, a wide spectrum of different kinds of light. It has infrared light, uh, UV light, and then all of the visible spectrums of light, but the light from our screens is very, very highly concentrated in um, blue light. And blue light specifically tells, because uh, blue light, the concentration of blue light in the natural sunlight is um, mostly at uh, that when the sun is in the highest part of the sky, so at noon. So when we're getting blue light from our screens at one o'clock in the morning, it's signaling to our brain that it's noon. And this is a huge reason that we have um, sleep disruption. Also, crap food and poor eating habits. Again, if you look at the way that we ate um, generations ago, uh, the access to um, high, uh, high sugar foods was very, very limited um, and food was more scarce. And so now not only do we have an abundance of food and the ability to eat whenever we choose to, we also have an abundance of crap food instead of the wholesome foods that we had in the past. In addition to this, we're having issues with topsoil erosion because um, with a demineral demineralization of our soil due to topsoil erosion, and this is causing us to not have the same amount of nutrients in our food if you look at an apple today versus an apple 100 or 200 years ago, it's going to have significantly less nutrients in the food 
as uh, in the apple uh, today as it did a uh, hundred or two hundred years ago. So even if you're getting the most healthy organic food that you can get, it's still not going to give you the nutrients that you need. And to digest food takes a lot of energy for the body. So there's kind of a um, with the with the the junk food and the d depleted foods that we're eating today, we have kind of an energy loss in our body. Um, instead of an energy gain when we're eating, if we're not careful about what and how we're eating. And then also we have such um, a sedentary lifestyle. So many of us work desk jobs and we are not moving. And again, if you look at our ancestors, they would sleep outdoors in, you know, in, a, in a little hut. They would wake up first thing when, uh, when the sun would come up, they would go outside. Usually they had to walk you know, a long distance for water or to to manage um their their livestock or their um whatever they needed to do for their days and they were moving all day long and now w some of us are lucky to get you know 5000 steps in a day so this is also a, a huge contributor to why we're not sleeping well because in order to be able to fall asleep and stay asleep you need to have um, a tired mind and also a tired body if you have one or the other but not both of them uh, your sleep will definitely be impacted so why are this is this is one of the primary questions that i get um, from people which is why am i waking up at <laughs> and it's usually around 3 a.m that's usually the the sweet spot for when people wake up So early awakening is a sign of stress. Basically what it means is that your body is saying, okay, I gave you all the sleep that you need to serve just to survive, but now you have to get up and run away from a saber tooth tiger or something. That's, that's essentially, you know, the brain hasn't fully evolved yet into this stressful reality that we are living in. So when it experiences the kind of stress that we're having on a daily basis, this this stress, um, even though it's not coming from running, having to run from wolves or a saber tooth tiger, the response is still the same. So it's basically saying, you got you got what you needed in order to keep living. Now get up and do what you need to do to to make yourself safe. So um, this could be a the the stress or the threat of stress could be a physiological um, stress. So you could have um, an infection in the body or um, some sort of uh, allergic response going on, um, or it could be emotional stress, or it could be a combination of both. And emotional stress feeds into physiological stress, and physiological stress can cause emotional stress because so it's a um, bi-directional pathway there. We talked about the role of cortisol and um, how, so uh, let me see. Sorry, just one second. I just want to, it seems like I wanna move this up. Oh, it won't let me. Okay. Um, okay. So we'll talk about the role of cortisol when I get to the next slide. Um, but essentially waking up in the middle of the night is a survival mechanism. As I mentioned, um, there's the traditional Chinese medicine uh, body clock. And from one to three is the time period that they attribute to the liver functioning. And from three to five is the, the lungs. And so... If you're waking from one to three um, through this lens of traditional Chinese medicine, it could be because your liver is uh, overworking in order to try to cleanse your body and purify your body from toxins. So um, that might be the part of the reason why you're waking up at that time. Um, also, your um, if you're waking up between three and five, this is common for um, people that live in congested environments um, that had a, have a lot of um, uh, poor air quality, also smokers, or someone who is um, s struggling with, uh, with grief, with, um, not un with unprocessed grief, I would say. Um, one thing that happens um, 
in general, I'll just say that when you're waking up early in the morning, um, it's basically um, considered a um, early uh, cortisol awakening response. And it's, um, it's, a, it's certainly a sign that your um, stress hormones are dysregulated and that you need to um, find ways to decrease stress, but either and either physiological stress and, um, and or emotional stress in, in your life. Um, sometimes people say, I keep waking through the night because I have to go to the bathroom. That's what um, Noctoria is um, nighttime need to urinate, to go to the bathroom to urinate. And uh, what I seem to find is that it's not always the case that it's the urge to go to the bathroom that's waking you up at night. Sometimes it's something else like a blood sugar spike or a cortisol spike that's causing you to wake up at, at, at night, but then you're awake and then you realize that you need to go to the bathroom. Um, if it is in fact, um, you know, incontinence and nocturia that's causing you to not be able to sleep through the night, then uh, one of the things that you can do is really work on your pelvic floor muscles. And another thing would be to not drink uh, liquids as late in the night. And then also be careful what kinds of medications that you're taking. And if any of the ones that you're taking specifically at bedtime are um, causing you to have a uh, um, more water buildup in the body. And then um, there's this concept that um, some people are just morning larks. Um, and that there is some genetic component to people either being night owls or morning larks. But I would really caution you to automatically come to that conclusion that that that, that is the case. Because more often than not, what I find is that it's actually due to a disrupted circadian rhythm and underlying health issues rather than an inherent genetic predisposition. So this is a graph that shows um, cortisol, uh, the cortisol response in a uh, healthy human versus dysregulated cortisol. Um, so in the green uh, bar in the middle, you'll see that um, it's starting basically at midnight over here. And so cortisol is the lowest in the middle of the night, and then it spikes um, around 6 a.m. in the morning, and then it tapers off during the day. One thing that I find interesting, and I haven't seen it lately on the graphs that I've been looking at, but my understanding is that Cortisol uh, goes up just slightly in the, the mid, it goes down and then it goes up just slightly in the late afternoon. And the time that it's going down is uh, in correlation with traditional siesta periods. And this is again, um, one of the ways that I think that we can learn from our, from our past and from our heritage is that it seems like uh, traditional societies understood this cortisol curve way before we had the science to, um, to tell us it. And they would honor this time period um, to to rest and digest their their morning meal and to re relax during the um, hottest part of the day. And today we do so much um, activity during the day, and our and our work schedules don't allow us to take that time to rest. But for someone who is having dysregulated cortisol, which I'll talk about on the curve in just a second, the one of the best things that I think that you can do is really honor that um, time after lunch to just take a little bit of time to decompress from your day. Um, what I found is that it, even if you don't nap, which I'll also talk about napping in a little bit, but even if you don't nap, if you just shut your eyes for five to 10 minutes and kind of tune out the world, it can be really, really helpful for um, uh, reducing your overall stress response and also for um, kind of helping what I call um, like defragging your hard drive. I've noticed that when I was really struggling with, um, with sleep um, and energy, which I don't have an issue with that anymore, but when I did, if I would shut my brain down, I would notice that it would kind of be like um, a meditative process where I would have all these thoughts running through my head. And then as the minutes went by, the thoughts would kind of settle, settle down. And I do feel like um, that is an important 
part of what we need to do in order to prepare our bodies to be able to sleep at night is to allow ourselves time to digest not only our, our food, but also just all of the experiences and activities of the day. So in a, um, a chronic a chronic stress state, so it, it, you'll see that it talks about um, the different stages of this insufficient adrenal response. You may have heard the term adrenal fatigue, and that term is really a misnomer because the adrenal glands don't get tired and uh, start producing less cortisol. What happens is the adrenal glands and the body in general is so um, beautifully brilliant and wise that because increased cortisol is a, um, is a pro-inflammatory state, the body is aware that having that pro-inflammatory state going on uh, chronically in the body is not good for it. And so it will reduce the cortisol output to try to mitigate some of the inflammation that's occurring in the body. But anyways, in stage one of this insufficient adrenal response is, uh, it's called the acute phase, and you'll have a, a fight or flight response. Um, maybe you'll have hot flashes, you'll have um, kind of uh, dysregulated emotions, and then the resistance phase is when you'll be feeling tired and wired. So I can't sleep. I'm exhausted, but I but I can't sleep no matter what I do. Um, insomnia is common. Inc increased blood pressure, increased cortisol, um, moodiness, um, issues with constipation, digestive symptoms, increased inflammation, and then um, the exhaustion phase is when basically your body just stops releasing as much cortisol to try to mitigate that um, inflammation. And it's when people basically reach a state of just complete exhaustion and um, don't have the, the energy to get out of bed. And what we see is that the, um, the overall uh, cortisol uh, curve kind of flatlines in that stage. So um, one way that you can uh, find out where your cortisol is, is to, a tw is to do a 24 hour saliva cortisol test. And that will give you a sense of what's going on with your cortisol levels and whether, um, in fact, you're having elevated cortisol levels at a time of the day when, um, when you shouldn't, and when you should be producing melatonin.